after the hour of six in the evening of January 31, 1985. And we're located in offices adjacent to uh, offices uh, occupied by the Federal Bureau of Investigation in San Antonio, Texas, for the purpose of interviewing Gordon Joseph Rayner under hypnosis in order to refresh his memory of events that he may have witnessed associated with an undercover reverse operation in Miami Lakes, Florida on or about March 11, 1981. In addition to myself, James W. Kenny, uh, Special Agent of the Federal Bureau of the Investigation, and DEA Special Agent Rayner, others present at this time, are Gerardo Cesar Medina, a senior inspector from uh, Drug Enforcement Administration headquarters in Washington, D.C., and Dr. Richard B. Garver, a clinical psychologist in private practice in San Antonio, Texas. Um, do you understand why we are here and what what the purpose of the interview is? Yes, I do. And do you understand that your participation uh, has to be voluntary, that you cannot be coerced or forced in any way to undergo uh, an interview such as this? Yes, I am doing it voluntarily. Do you have any uh, objection to us videotaping these entire proceedings? Not at all. Do you have any objection to any of the people that are present in the room at this time being present throughout the interview? No. If you do at any time, please let us know, okay? All right. Obviously, if you object to Dr. Garver and myself, we got a problem. <laughs> Uh, basically, what we're going to do in, in just a moment, Dr. Garver will talk with you, and then afterwards, I'll ask you to relate for us at a remember level, a conscious recollection of any events associated with this particular operation. And that's the only thing we're interested in, is what happened in Miami Lakes, Florida, in this operation on the 11th of March, 1981. We don't care what you eat for breakfast or anything else. Fine. And then if you agree, we'll sign a consent form, and then we'll go into the hypnotic interview. Sure, it's fine with me. At this time, I'd like to give just a little background on Dr. Garver. He's a certified and licensed clinical psychologist in private practice in San Antonio, Texas. He's involved in the treatment of several hundred patients each month and the training of many doctors in hypnotherapy. He's a diplomate of the American Board of Psychological Hypnosis with a specialty in clinical hypnosis and serves as a special consultant to the FBI. He's here today because we consider your welfare in this interview important and we've asked him to come and help us. Fine. Do you have any questions on anything so far? No, not at all. Okay. Sure. You know, we've had just a moment to meet, and I uh, need to tell you what we're here to do in terms of uh, how we're going to use hypnosis. <coughs> hypnosis is an altered state of consciousness, uh, so in a way it's an invasive procedure, but the way it's going to be used here uh, really is uh, more relaxation and, and a focus than anything else. Um, uh, I'll, uh, I want to give you some information about hypnosis, answer any questions you have, and then tell you exactly how we're going to use it in the interview. Uh, some people think of hypnosis as a, a sleep state. Uh, it's really not. The EEG is different than sleep. And uh, actually, it's going to be, in this situation, more like having a daydream. Uh, you're going to be aware of being relaxed and being here be aware of things around you. A person who would be having hypnosis for surgery would not. We would ask them to dissociate. We would ask them to go fishing or hunting or where they wanted to go, and we'd see that they get there and that they wouldn't be here and wouldn't remember anything. And, <coughs> but obviously, that would be counter to what we're wanting to do here. This is to enhance memory. And hypnosis has a uh, as its center, a focus. Uh, now, the focus for the surgery patient is kind of the same focus that you or I would have if we listened to a boring speaker. It wouldn't be the speaker. It would be away someplace. Uh, uh, we hope that this will be the same kind of focus that uh, or a woman would have when uh, she's uh, uh, birthing a child with hypnosis. Uh, she doesn't want to be away. She wants to be a part of that. She's hypnotized to produce anesthesia, but she's very much involved here and now. 
uh, if we were listening to a very interesting, charismatic speaker, we wouldn't be very much involved here uh, uh, and uh, to the exclusion of other things. That's where the focus will be. It will be here, part of you, uh, part of your mind focusing on our questions, and you will also uh, then be somewhere else. We're asking you to go back to a situation. Uh, I call it a memory walk. We're just back, visualize uh, this other place, this other time where you have certainly been and uh, place yourself there and then go with us uh, forward from there as though it were happening now. Uh, go forward uh, through that period of time as, you know, we can do it slowly, carefully. We can kind of stop the action and, and have you go only that far and then answer some questions, take it a little further, and so on. And uh, it will, as I understand it, it will be uh, at a time that uh, where you were involved with the action, so you will have been there, and you will simply be there again, and and uh, tell us what you're doing as you go through it again in your mind. And essentially, right. that's uh, that's it. Um, the reason that we ask you, as Jim will in a moment, uh, to consciously go through it first, is to see. Uh, uh, what the difference is between your conscious recollect recollection, which is, of course, being here in the present and trying to remember back uh, as to what happened, as opposed to uh, getting relaxed and then going back there and going forward as though right. it were happening now. And that seems uh, to elicit uh, far better recall than it does to be here and remember. So. Sure. Um, Basically, that's, uh, that's why we do that uh, comparison. Have you tell uh, Mr. Kenny consciously what you remember, and then we do the hypnotic interview. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I guess I need only to know, uh, I might as well ask you now before we do the actual hypnotic interview, uh, uh, formally, if you're on any medication, no, I'm not. Okay, and that, uh, uh, do you have any other medical history of any uh, period of unconsciousness for any period of time, trouble with anesthesia, anything like that? No, I don't. And any psychiatric history? No. Okay, thank you. Well, oh, well, I guess one other thing. Uh, uh, is, how is your vision normally? Is it 2020 or corrected or? Mm, no, it's not 2020. It's 2020, uh, 2010 in my r right eye and about 2060 in my left eye. I wear glasses for a distance, and I do have a pair of reading glasses that I don't use because I they're see. too close up. Okay. At the time of this uh, particular situation, were you wearing glasses? No, I wasn't. Okay. I just uh, started wearing them <coughs> regularly uh, within the last year. Okay. And are you, uh, to your knowledge, uh, Colorblind? Do you have any trouble separating blues and yellows or reds and greens? No, it was recent a test as uh, six months ago. I did not. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions for me? No. Okay. Gordon, what I'd like to do is read the consent form out loud uh, and then ask you to look it over, see if you have any questions about it, and then try to address any sure. questions you have. It reads on. January 31, 1985, at San Antonio, Texas. I, Gordon Joseph Rayner, hereby agree voluntarily and freely to undergo hypnosis and be interviewed under hypnosis in order to assist the Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, with an inquiry or investigation the DEA is conducting. I understand that James W. Kenny, a special agent of the FBI, and that's myself, will be present and assist in the interview. I also understand that a videotape recording will be made of the entire interview and that this method of preservation of the interview may be used for any lawful purpose connected with this investigation or any subsequent action based upon the investigation. Dr. Richard B. Garver, a mental health professional, has explained the procedures to be used during the course of this hypnosis session and any questions I had concerning this procedure have been answered to my satisfaction purpose of this interview under hypnosis 
is to assist my memory in recalling events I may have witnessed associated with an undercover reverse operation in Miami Lakes, Florida on or about March 11, 1981. And can I ask you to look that over and see if you have any questions about anything? No. Do you feel like you understand it? Yes, I do. Okay. If I could then, if you're willing to. Okay. Dr. Garber, can I get you to sign the form too, please? Yeah. Tell me what you remember about this, and, and keeping in mind that, that our interest is as it pertains to this particular event, this this operation. I don't okay. Care where which one we're talking? About. Right. Uh, prior to <coughs> prior to March 11th, I think it was either the 10th or probably the 9th. Uh, I was down there from Savannah assisting the agents in Operation Grouper. I, uh, Packed up in a resident agent in charge in Savannah at the time. That we had a uh, another reverse deal go down at the same location, the the apartment as it was known, uh, involving flashing either 50 pounds or 50 keys of coke. And I got involved in the chain of custody of the coke. It was bothersome to me that the uh, the methods of control they used for the evidence were not up to my standards. Uh, using that as a basis that on some time bef uh, before the deal went down on the 11th, and I think it was that morning, we had a meeting on how the deal was going to go, and that I said that uh, I was insistent that we were going to have some uh, using evidence labels, the DEA evidence labels, and secure the money that was anticipated to be obtained from the uh, violators seal that in some manner and that if I especially if I was going to get involved with it and that way I wouldn't have to be involved in the chain of custody of the evidence for a case that was basically the groups in Miami and that my participation involved taking a sealed box I could hold it for a period of time and turn it back over and still not appear in the official chain of custody because of the uh, my confidence in the sealing methods that I'm just, uh, I wouldn't have to be officially involved in chain of custody. So at some time at the meeting in the morning, I insisted that we do use the, the DEA labels, evidence labels, and put it in a box. And somehow we got the Xerox box. Uh, they then, or we all went out to the undercover area. The uh, first thing, the uh, group supervisor surprised me when he changed the game plan and said, you handle the outside situation, which is the surveillance and the arrest of the bad guys after they leave the apartment with the coke. Uh, because I figured I was only a, even though I was a supervisor, I was only a visitor from out of town and that I should not have had that job, that it was his group and his operation. But I agreed to do it anyway. We got set up on the apartment out in Miami Lakes Uh, the deal was that the undercover agents were in the apartment, and as we had done in the past, had bad guys come up to the 7-Eleven area, call the house, and an undercover agent would come out, meet them, and lead them into the area as a protective measure. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we had the phone under surveillance at the 7-Eleven. We determined that they had received a call. I observed Agent Healy come up in the uh, Trans Am, meet with the two subjects. I think we're in a Subaru station wagon. 
and drive towards the house. The surveillance had been planned and we had set up on the house. I set up in a position that looking down a dead end or a cul-de-sac driveway where there's I think about five apartments on either side where I could see the sidewalk where the entrance to the house which is recessed back off the sidewalk was. Uh, we had previously arranged that uh, if the deal went down and the bad guys got the coke that the uh, agent Healy would come out to the car with the bad guys, a visual signal that the deal had gone down and we would put the arrest plan in operation. We had also planned that uh, after securing the bad guys, which was to take place almost when, within sight of the undercover apartment, to keep the guys in the undercover apartment cool, we would fake hitting the apartment, kicking down the door allegedly and arresting them so as to make the bad guys think that it, they weren't the, the cops. Uh, we set up on the apartment, as I said, I was sitting, I had a GMC Blazer, official government vehicle that I was sitting in with a female agent from Tampa and a sergeant or deputy sheriff from some rural county near Panama City, Florida. Uh, scenario was the bad guys had to come out of this cul-de-sac and down a narrow driveway and we had a Dade County marked unit at both ends of it with agents following them in both ends. Um, the coke was not in the house when the bad guys arrived. Uh, they made another phone call and Jeff, Jeff Charlotte drove up in his Z car, parked it and took the coke into the house or took the coke to the door of the house. He turned and sat in his car, which was across the drive from the apartment. Eventually, uh, Pat Healy and the two bad guys came out and put something in the car. And since he was with them, I knew that the, they had the coke. I alerted the uh, other surveillance units. And as they came up and turned down the street out of sight of the front of the apartment, uh, Dade County Public Safety Unit moved in from the front. The Subaru stopped and they started to back up. And the other marked unit came up behind them. And the agents in the car behind the Dade County Unit in front came at the car. And by this time I had come over the wall, the retaining wall between the driveway where I was and where the action was. And the, uh, the arrest went down, the arrest and seizure went down. Both guys had guns. We seized them, the guns, and the coke with the standard confusion that goes down with one of those deals. And then, as an afterthought, sort of, oh yeah, let's hit the apartment. And Jeff got there ahead of me because he wasn't really involved in the bust. And then I made loud noises and pulled my shiny automatic out and says, okay, let's go hit the apartment and ran down the short distance to it and hooping and hollering and making lots of noise and looking like a fucking fool that I uh, went up and beat on the door and went in. Inside the agents I remember that were in there was Ted Weed, Larry Hahn, Pat Healy, and I think Billy Renton from Panama City. And some way I got the money in this, in the, or somebody said there's the box of money. The money is in the box. And there were, the evidence tapes were on it. And somebody also suggested, hurry up, let's clean up the place because we expect another bunch of bad guys in, they're going to run a similar deal again. And as I picked up the box, the evidence tapes came off. Not completely off, they popped off the bottom. And uh, I remember saying, oh shit, now I'm in the chain of custody of the money. I took it back out, I took custody of the money, and initially I thought I had gone back to my blazer over back over the fence, but 
my memory being refreshed previously that Jeff and I got in his, his Z car and drove down to the gas station where some of the surveillance agents were and whoever had driven my blazer down there. Put the money in the back of the blazer and with this, still with this female agent and there was a black agent that accompanied us back to the DEA office and carried the money upstairs to group one, the group that I was working with. And an agent from Savannah that worked for me and two local police officers from the Glen County Sheriff's De or Glen County Police Department in Georgia who were with me, part of my entourage, uh, counted the money quickly or counted bundles, I don't recall which, and determined that instead of two and a quarter, there was only about $165,000 there. And I temporarily sealed the put the money back in the box and temporarily sealed it again. And I wrapped it in plastic tape and put my evidence stickers on it with my name and everything and stored it until, I guess it was two days later, when I took it out and processed the money, counted it again and again, verified the count on it, and put it in DEA evidence envelopes, the clear evidence envelopes, and heat sealed it and turned it into the cashier. Um, and then I know at the trial, there was a big stink made about the fact that the money was not what it was supposed to be. And I had since I learned after the trial that the defense attorney had already given his uh, defendants polygraph, his clients, the defendants polygraph test, and they had passed it or indicated that they had not taken the money, that there was 220000 or something like that there, and therefore somebody in DEA must be responsible for it loss of it and I took a polygraph that uh, I guess proved that I didn't have anything to do with it and uh, that's about it without going into details or you know questions that's I don't know specifics on well, that what <coughs> what is important to us and why I've asked you to go through it like that okay. is that <coughs> excuse me quite honestly we don't know what aspect you played in this, and it serves sure. as a road map okay. for me. I'll be the person talking to you when you're in hypnosis. And it serves as a road map to kind of get started. Um, I think for our purposes, um, you say there was a meeting that morning before the bus deal went? Yeah, before the deal went down, there was a meeting. I'm pretty sure it was that, that morning as opposed to the day before. Well, we'll use that meeting as a point that we want to go to. Okay. And. <coughs> Excuse me. As you start getting in touch with it, if it's that morning or the preceding day, it'll be academic because you'll go sure. to that meeting. Okay. If it is the preceding day, could you let us know? All right. Uh, you know what day it is. When I get the there. Day before, yeah. or if it's that the day of the 11th. And then what I'm particularly interested in are the uh, uh, say the conversations, the events, what happened, how you ended up with the money things of this nature, and that'll basically be the line that I'd like to pursue. If at any time, while I'm talking to you, and I guess being an investigator, you like to think of yourself as logical and progressive, and I might be, in my mind, going from one to two to three to four, and if all of a sudden you say, hey, this kid's going too slow for me, I want to go to six, go to six. Okay. I will be starting you out on a road map that, that I feel is developmental, but if anything comes into your mind, sure. you just say okay. whatever the hell it is. Okay. All right. And if you don't like the method of questioning or how we're going about it, just say, let's try something else. All right. Okay? Because you're sure. the engineer. All right. <laughs> Jerry, is, is that my where mind. we want to go? Get back into the meeting before or to the March 11th thing? Pardon me? Is that where we want to go, to the meeting before or the March 11th uh, uh, scenario? March 11th morning, or? March 11th in the morning. Uh, just, just briefly uh, as to the box and, and the tape. So and, and the discussion, the, the only thing we're interested in at the meeting, really, is, say, since the box seems to be the thing in question, any discussion of the box, how it's going to be sealed, how it's going to be treated, and who said what, and then eventually okay. any change. That would be the meeting, that would be the meeting in the, 
with group one, which would be Jeff, uh, Ted, uh, Pat, and uh, getting a script ready for the okay. day's events. Yeah. That would be the one. Then. Okay. Do you have any questions? I mean, that's been kind of No, I, not, not yet. But I'm getting a little nervous now. It's like, this is it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> well, you know, you've been sitting around all day waiting, and now you're oh boy, in yes. just like that. Okay. Huh? No, it's, it's about all. Okay. Okay. Uh, as, I, uh, as I mentioned to you before, uh, we're both, Jim and I, are going to talk with you and, and, um, and help you be relaxed. And, uh, and help you uh, go through this. And uh, basically, as you were going through this uh, just now, uh, telling him uh, what, what went on, probably as you were thinking about these events, you even had mental pictures that, that uh, formed in your mind, as most of us do when we're recounting uh, some kind of uh, event. Uh, basically, that's uh, what we're going to be doing, except that uh, I'd like you to start by just uh, closing your eyes and relaxing and just being as comfortable as you can be. And uh, I'm going to uh, be uh, taking your pulse here. If you can just let me have this so I can have some uh, idea of how you're doing. And if you just take a, a deep breath for me now, slow and easy, and then let it all out. That's fine. Another one. Good. This one, a uh, nice deep breath and hold it now. Okay, Gordon, now feel the tension build and use the tension as a signal just to release and just let go and just let all the tension drain away. And what I'd like you to do now is to begin just to uh, drift back. A way that will help you do that is to start at the number 100 and think silently to yourself backward by ones. In other words, think 99, 98, 97. And continue to do that. And just uh, give me a signal by maybe moving this finger as you're doing that. OK, good. That's fine. You might time the count with your breathing uh, every time you breathe in or out. Or... Good. Good. That's fine. And that just helps you concentrate consciously, and your unconscious mind can listen to me. And it just happens very naturally, very easily. While you're doing that now, I want you also to just kind of drift back in, in time, uh, maybe to earlier today, uh, yesterday, the day before, last week, last month. It really doesn't matter what events you touch upon uh, during this course, but the target is March 11th. 1981 at that meeting that you were just uh, discussing. And I just want you to kind of take your time and drift back to that time. And when you, when you get there, and uh, I want you to just place yourself at that meeting so that we can go forward from there. And when you do that, you can stop the counting and uh, you can just uh, let me know by uh, just raising this hand completely. Another signal that we can use 
is there's a part of your brain, your unconscious mind, that helps you relax even more. I'm just going to give you a signal. That signal is just uh, pressure on your right shoulder, just like this. And that pressure will be a signal for you to relax even more, become more involved in, in the imagery. And when you can get a picture of you being at that meeting before it starts or just as it's starting you you can pick the spot you know best where to begin then you signal me and and Mr. Kenny and I will uh, help you get more involved actually uh, we're going to be going along for the ride, so to speak, and having you sort of be our eyes and our ears, our guide. And we'll let you help us. We really need you to tell us where we're going next. We want to be there with you, and so there'll be some pictures that are occurring to us as you explain yours to us, what you're seeing. We want then to be now, now to be then. And when that time becomes now, we'll want you to go through that Tell us what you're doing now, what you're going to do next. And we'll, we'll be attempting to stay with you and to form pictures in our minds as well as to what is happening and how you describe it to us. And I suggest to you that as you learn this method as you go along, that, uh, that you'll be able to use this yourself uh, uh, to relax and help uh, handle uh, stress, uh, 